What it do, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Game Bangers Near Death Experience. This is episode seven. I'm gonna get right into it. But before I do, if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate that. And share this for anybody you think might like this type of content. So let's run it up. So 1986. Yep, the eighties was wild. We was into so much shit. It's been just it was that was eight the eighties was just active. 86, 87 was just super active. 85 too, but for me, I just really started getting into a lot of shit in eighty six, eighty seven. That's why most of the stuff I talk about is from those years. Eighty five, I wasn't into shit like that. I ain't gonna even front. Eighty four, eighty three, I wasn't into shit like that. But eighty six, that's when I just really started getting into shit. And that's when I just turned up my banging in those two years, straight up. So, 86, uh, we had this motel over here on 97th and Avalon. Me and my, my son, mama, and the other homegirls, the baby school, and we were staying in these motels over here. So, at this time, you know, we was bouncing around from motels to motels, serving and shit, just getting it in. I done been in so many different motels all over L.A., of course, in Inglewood, but all over. I done been in so many different motherfucking motels on Crenshaw, the High Park Motel, all that shit, the Cornette, all this shit on Florence. I done been in so many different motels back in the days. It's like, you know, like I said, I was just living in the streets. Now, this one right here happened when, uh, okay, one day there was a party going on somewhere uh, by the airport or something. So the homie Stoney called me like, bro, we gonna go to this. Well, actually he didn't call me because he was there. Niggas didn't have cell phones then, so let me, let me rephrase that right but anyway uh must be from the payphone or something but anyway let me know there's a party going on over here by the airport he wanted to go at this hotel so he wanted to go so i'm like yeah for sure so he like him and the homie baby sleep for may 7 gangsters gonna come through and scoop me up so now i'm at the at this room me and my son mama eight ball we had the room up in here and the homegirl baby scud them they had a room right next to us so we got the side by side room this little motel right on 97th and avalon is still there to this day uh, called non, uh, the non, I guess it was the Avalon Motel or something like that. So anyway, we're in there. I got I got long hair. I had the perm back then. So the homies tell me they coming over. I plug in the curling iron, getting ready to, you know, get my curls up in the perm. Got the iron hooked up, ready to iron the khakis up and all this. Uh, eight ball, she downstairs in the back. It's like a little parking lot area back here. It's like a little alley back here. She back there with her little sister, Michi, uh, one of the homegirls from Six Deuce East Coast and, uh, and somebody else. I don't know. They down there talking. Oh, the homegirl from Venice. They was down there in the back out talking because I guess somebody's going to leave or whatever. I don't know. So while they doing that, you know, I'm up here ironing my khakis because the homie's going to come scoop me up. I'm ironing my khakis. And then uh, <laughs> somehow, I don't know what it was, but uh, no, uh, her sister, A-Ball sister Michi, come up to the room. And she's like, Crazo, Crazo, uh, ball out here getting into it with these Mexicans in the back. I'm like, what? <laughs> so I'm like a little bit frail at the time. I got on a little thin ass wife beater. I jump up like, what? I got on some more uh, blue corduroy house shoes and some, some gray dicky cores and <laughs> my little skinny ass come out there, hair looking all wild and shit. I go out to like, you know, I'm like, cool, what's happening out here? And then as soon as I step out the room door, I'm on, a, you know, outside the hotel room, a little the tier, whatever, you know, I said tier. You can tell I'm old jail nigga because I said tier, but whatever you call that other dude. The layman's turns, you know what I mean, upstairs. So, anyhow, as soon as I come out and look, I see a motherfucking Sprite bottle come flying over there, and they kind of running from the bottle. They, like, running back, and the bottle hit. Now they like, fuck you, motherfucker, fuck you. So now I run downstairs to see what's cracking. I come downstairs. Uh, it's two it's two Pisces out here, Mexicans. They back here, you know, they having words or whatever. So I go down and approach, hey, man, what's up? What's up with my girl, man? What, what's up? And at first he tried to explain himself to me. He was like, hey, well, you know, and then he just had the heart to say, man, fuck that bitch. <laughs> he said, fuck that bitch. So, you know, I got to get off now. So I fire shit up. Bing. So I'm serving him. His boy jump in. So now they both on me. So I'm like, you know, then the homegirl baby skull, she she's always had this little motherfucking uh, Louis, Louisville slugger bat about this big. She pulled out the Louisville slugger and start welling on him. Now, the first one I fired on, I must have cracked his shit because he was out of commission after that because he was holding his shit like this. So now I'm tussling with this other dude until she come with the bat. She in with the bat. Now, they take off down this alley, this alley right here. So you cross 97, there's some apartments 
where a whole bunch of Pisces be at. They always be all deep over there, deep. So they go down there. So now some little young homies out here from East Coast, they see in the situation. So they out there like looking like, okay, yeah, but there was just a younger cat. I'm like 16 at the time. So these cats must have been about 14 or something younger than that because they was on bikes from little cats. So I'm like, all right. So now I'm going to show off in front of a little crowd and shit. I'm like, you know, like, yeah, you know what I mean? I'm, <laughs> I'm walking around out here like, you know, like, yeah, like I done did that. Like, fuck these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? I got this old swagger going like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now I'm going to go back upstairs. Oh, man. All of a sudden you see an army coming down this motherfucking alley with sticks and shit. I'm like, look at all these motherfuckers. They come and run this way. We all break from the back. We's in the parking stall. Run upstairs to the room. We go in both of these two rooms. These motherfuckers come with, I mean, kid you not, a motherfucking stampede. Niggas was coming, yeah! Some niggas run upstairs, and I'm like, everybody get in the room. I'm trying to be the hero, nigga and shit. So they get in the room. So we was in this, the room, had a little bathroom in the back. Now, it was one of them bathroom doors where somebody came in there, you know, you got to pull it open. That's a dangerous bathroom to hide in because... They just pulling against your weight and your, your, your pull, you know what I mean? It ain't like you could be in front of it and blocking it from coming in. So they all start running to the bathroom. Uh, they cousin Marcus was there, the hunger, Jerry from East Coast, and I think it was, it was somebody else. So it was like about five of us in this one room right here. Everybody else was in the room next. No, Jerry was in the next room. She was in the next room with the rest of them. So we was in these two rooms, but they seen us come in my room. So now here they come, they run up the stairs. Oh man, these motherfuckers tow out the whole motherfucking window right here. They throwing rocks. They beating this motherfucking window. They kicking on this motherfucking door, trying to get in at my ass. They not really tripping off the next room. So now they all like, get in the bathroom, get in the bathroom. I'm like, fuck that bathroom. You think that that bathroom is weak as fuck. They gonna come in this room and do us. So I gotta play the motherfucking hero. Here I am. Okay, you come in this motherfucking room like this. So now I'm on the door like this. My back is against the door. These motherfuckers kicking the door. I'm holding it like this. My body is like this because the motherfuckers off the hinges and shit. They kicking. Ah, motherfucker. And then the windows out the curb. Everything out. Motherfuckers is trying to come through the window. I'm fronting. I'm like, get the gat. Get the gat. Bust. Bust. These motherfuckers call my bluff. Yeah, he ain't got no gat. He ain't got no gat. Yeah, he ain't got no gat. So I'm like, get the gat. I, I got a stick now. I got a little piece of the window that came out. I'm like, just hold him back. Get, get back. Get back. Get back. These motherfuckers trying to come to the window. Oh, man. There was so many motherfuckers. I was like, it's over. This door. Hello. Can I hold this door like this and swing like this and shit? Get back. These they won't come through the motherfucking window. I don't know what it was. The police never showed up, but for some reason, they just all took off. I don't know what it was. They took off and broke. So maybe the police did, did come. I don't know. Or somebody, I think somebody fired a shot in the area. I don't know. They took off. Now I'm out the room. I'm like, oh shit. What the fuck is this? So come out, they all gone. We looking around. Everybody like, y'all don't care then, y'all don't care then. They come from the other room. So now we out here on the little on, upstairs and shit. I'm like, oh, that shit was crazy. I got a cut on my stomach because these motherfuckers had a stick with a nail or some shit on it. And as they was hitting through the window, I'm right holding the motherfucking door. The nail come and cut me on the stomach right here. So I'm now I'm bleeding. My stomach is bleeding. It, it looked worse than it really was. You know, you just like a fucking razor cut. But it's just like a whole lot of blood running. So now everybody like, oh, crazy. Oh, you bleeding? Oh, you bleeding? So I'm like, you know, I'm still trying to play hero. Now my baby mama, she frantic. She on the fucking panic and shit. She like, oh, oh, oh. She just like, that shit just had her so motherfucking shook up. They were so motherfucking scared. But now check this out. These motherfuckers come back. Here they come back. Now they coming back. <laughs> ah, get them, yeah. This time we not running back in this same room. We run downstairs. I'm trying to get up in this motherfucking uh, rental office or some shit. <laughs> it was some brother in there with his little broad. He was in the room. We just kicked in the motherfucking door, ran up in the room. This nigga's all in the bed with baby trying to get it. Hey, hey man, what y'all doing? Like, nigga, I'm all up in there. We hiding. Now we're in the motherfucking bathroom. And now I'm fucking eight ball. She got the motherfucking curling iron. She down on the floor. She's having little plugs on the bottom. She plugged the curling iron. I'm like, what the fuck are you going to do with that? These Now these niggas start shooting. So <laughs> this nigga, run. I'm like, what the fuck? Where's the homies? And what the fuck? Oh, shit. But then, I don't know, they cleared out the police, somebody came, I don't know what it was, but they finally cleared out, the homies finally came later, and, you know, we did our shit, and <laughs> that's where it went from that, but that shit was crazy, that just happened to be another near-death experience I wanted to share with y'all on this episode 7, because that shit was crazy, and it could have been all bad, nigga could have got killed in a situation like that, once again, that was the 80s, 1986, a lot of shit was going on, I was out there in the motels, trying to sell crack. So whatever, you know what I mean? Just hustling, trying to do my thing, game banging, and nigga just been through a lot of shit. And this is only episode seven. I got, I kid you not, I got quite a few more 
on the way. None of this shit is made up. I cannot make this shit up. This is all real shit that I done been through. And I say anybody else who got their own gamers who got their own near death experiences, share that hashtag, man. Uh, was it GB near death experiences? Don't say share your hashtag. I got a couple of them up there already. But we all have been through a bunch of shit. I mean, I like to hear yours too. And everybody like to hear your shit. Everybody's story deserves to be heard. But put your shit up. But continue to continue to watch my shit because I'm gonna bring some more hot shit for y'all. Some more real shit. Uh, man, thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for sharing this shit. Uh, thank y'all for all them thumbs up and helping me get to what I'm trying to get to. I'm almost at 2,000. I appreciate that. I couldn't have done it without y'all. And shout out to everybody else that's doing their thing. And like I said, man, you living that life, you in the field, get that life insurance policy, bro. Don't play with that. Facts.